Hey everyone, it's Mad Guru here. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the other two units in the Trials of Mana, uh, Duran and Reitz. So stay tuned, see if you should be spending your lapis on either of them, or if this is a stay away banner. Alright, uh, first stuff I'm going to talk about is Duran. Duran, Duran? <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm an 80s kid here, uh, so fortunately, in a way, the name is the, might be the best part about this unit. Uh, frustrating, this isn't a true dual sh shift uh, unit. This is just a brave shift that could be on turn one, last four turns, and then you are forced back for one turn, and then you can go back to uh, the brave shift overall. Let's look under the normal. Uh, the element resistance for normal is actually pretty good. Uh, it is a tank. Uh, it has a very large amount of uh, resistances overall and 100% to fire dark. Um, it's normal abilities here. Uh, true spin slash at level 5 is 100 exile enemies, which gives 10 uh, limit burst to caster. can be triple casted or double casted and increases his attack and defense for 300% with limit burst damage for 150%. You will be using this uh, on the turn that you get sent back. Uh, otherwise, though, uh, you're not going to be using his side very much unless if you're looking for a very offensive physical tank. Uh, he has the ability to do both uh, dark... Uh, he has a dark saber. Let's just go with that first along with uh, Ice Saber uh, and Flame Saber as well. So he's got those three Fire, Ice, Dark that gives the element to himself for five turns and increase both magic and physical damage of that element for five turns. While at 60x, while the Earth is the same thing but gives 80x damage. So he has the ability to imbue himself with four different uh, elements with giving additional damage, uh, except the earth is 80 and 50%, which is higher than the 30 and 60 for the other three. Uh, and the other main skill that he has here is uh, physical damage 72x with defense scaling. Uh, so he's kind of odd to build in this form, but you are going to be building him with defense. He can reduce his mitigation damage for 75% for two turns, which is nice, and against dragons is 50% on top of that. Uh, he has a nice fire, ice, earth, light, and dark resistance for 120%, which gives that and allows for world breaker for four turns. Uh, this is actually fairly important. If you do use him, you are going to be using world breaker nonstop. And just like all the other Trials of Mana unit, has Fairy Wall Knife three times per battle to give 600 MP recovery back. Um, let's see here. Uh, EX3, 500 attack. N no difference. Uh, 60 limit burst. Uh, gives more beast damage overall. Uh, the one thing I do like is that he has 100% resistance to charm if you use this TMR or STMR. Uh, LB gauge 15 per turn as well. Uh, it has decent attack as well. He has very large equipment SPR and increases his chain modifier cap by 100% with the single wield. Uh, he can do it with the shield as well if you are going to use him as a tank. And he truly, truly hates uh, dragons uh, and gives another 150 uh, percent one's single wielding any weapon so if you don't have it with a uh, with the shield he already comes with his STMR equipped at 400% uh, true double true double hand uh, the world breaker though this is the one thing that I'd like to talk about and it's actually more important than the other one you got physical damage 5x to one enemy and physical damage 80x with ignored 50% defense, so that turns into 160 uh, to one enemy at the end hit, which can be triple casted after uh, turn one. 
So he can do an awful lot of damage. You are talking at 165x just from this times 3. So you're almost at 500x. Um, and he also, uh, for his limit burst, if you use it, which is 240x, increases modifier by 100x for two turns to caster. World Breaker, which actually does a incredibly even higher amount of damage. And this is where you're going to be using him. You're going to want to use the True Quake Bringer, followed by uh, first you're, let me go back. First you're going to do the uh, unlocking ability, then you do True Quake Bringer, and then for two turns he will have an insane amount of damage overall. Uh, and that's for his normal or sorry, that was his brave shift form for his normal form, though not nearly as interesting. Uh, you're going to be uh, going to be the ice saber here, Duran. This is so. This is the uh, tank form, as you can uh, notice here. Um, he's got ice and dark uh, 60x, similar to the previous. And also he has uh, uh, Earth and Fire. And this time, uh, once again, Earth is by far the highest. Um, he has the ability to do light physical damage there, but that's not the big deal. This cover is basically what you're going to be using it all the way for. Um, all in all... You're, the only thing that you're really going to be using him for is turn one. You're going to uh, really move to the Brave Ship form. Go to uh, cast Crimson Vengeance, and then probably the element that you want him to have, uh, Dark or Earth, is probably the two main ones that you're going to go with. And another skill, doesn't matter which one. Going to cast his Limit Burst on turn two. And then three and four, you're going to uh, do your biggest damage overall to start a stray. And for bosses that have, you know, that you're going to try to do turn seven, turn eight, etc., you just change, you know, that turn one to turn five to fill it all out. Uh, all in all, is this unit good? It's a decent unit. Uh, I would have much rather preferred to seen him as a non-limited unit. Um, so his STMR Deathbringer, <sighs> this is the one weapon that I kind of really kind of would like to have on somebody. This is my main draw here. It's a two handed there. Uh, the damage is, uh, okay for variants. It's not as high as some of the newer variants, which is a little disappointing. Uh, but 180 with Dragon Killer Plus, which is which is 75 percent for both physical and magic damage. This is the one thing I want him for. Um, but as a overall damage unit, I do not like him uh, nearly as much. His uh, TMR King's Gloves, which is not working here, so let me uh, pull it up here. It's 50 attack with King Spirit, which gives 50 percent boost. I mean, for a TMR, it's actually not bad with 30 percent uh dark resist which is kind of useful it's not worth pulling for quote quote but the death bringer is um uh so really as a unit per se he's okay uh he is n i don't qualify him as a limited must have but the stmr is really the big thing you know, and just to prove the point for the SCMARTs right here, is that Dragon Killer Plus. And having a 1 point, basically 3 average multiplier instead of 1.25 to 1.7 hive, which a Maw King has. So it gives a 1.5x, which is a little higher. Um, I'm a little disappointed by that, but the attack here at 180 is pretty good, especially for a true double hand. Uh, and that killer, 75% for dragon killer, You're, you will use uh, against dragon enemies that you need to have all that with. So now let's go with, by far the better unit, Reese. And 
this unit's actually a kind of tough to talk through, but let's go through. Um, Gigas Lance for the TMR is uh, a very interesting weapon. It's two-handed, only useful to reach. Uh, you kind of need it for her because of the fact that it is uh, 178 for both attack and magic, and I'll explain why. Uh, but all in all, it's an okay TMR, but it's exclusive to Reets, and you're going to be using it for Reets. Uh, her STMR, Royal Spearmanship, is very interesting for Spear, but once again, it's really expected to only go through, uh, really to her as well. Uh, that 40% Wind and 40% Dark is nice. 80% attack is pretty sweet with the spear equipped with those elements, so you might be able to see that on like a sky if you need to. Uh, but basically at this point, we are going here. Um, you know, and uh, with, you know, depending on cow, you might actually want to use it. So her STMR is fairly okay. Uh, I could see it being used for a lot of other things, but it's not as, uh, ooh, like Durant's is. Uh, let's just go with the normal here. Um, her normal form isn't as, uh, exciting as her Brave Shift form. Uh, her normal form is going to be attack-based. Her magic form, or sorry, her Brave Shift form is going to be magic-based, just to, uh, make sure that you guys realize uh, if you are going for her, what you need to plan for her. Uh, so, Raging Fury, AR chaining, which can be triple chained. Uh, so that is one of my positives, is that she can be a really nice chain setter for you uh, if you're looking for. And just so that everybody knows, and I forgot to say, she is true Brave Shift. Uh, this is very, very nice. You can switch there. Her Meteor Thrust is a kind of a triple skill in itself. Uh, does uh, triple AoE chain and then uh, like physical damage t uh, later with the turn to let delay afterwards. So it's an interesting skill. Um, and it, she does, this is her jump skill. Not honestly, not the reason why you're going to be pulling for her if you are. Um, she can increase 250 skill saw that uh, reduce mitigation for 50% to all allies. That's actually pretty nice skill, to be honest. Uh, she can also increase attack and magic to 80% to all allies uh, and increase the LB damage and fill rate as well. And part of her triple cast and the defense as well with reducing physical mitigation damage. So for her first skill she can actually be very useful for uh her physical and magic damage mitigation along with then boosting attack and magic it's not the highest level but uh for a hundred percent basically of attack and magic uh it kind of reduces uh sometimes when you we bring in Aerith as an example at least we know that reeds will be able to do a lot of damage and so it kind of depends on her positive versus the negative of your other main damage dealers on what you're looking for overall. Uh, she has a physical jump damage 100x time delay. Eh. Uh, and uh, she also has the ability to do 300% uh, for all that with the mitigate damage taken for five turns to allies. So on turn two, you can cast that. Uh, and once again, it's, but the, uh, and she can increase light physical damage to herself only for 50%. And to be honest, that's not really going to be the main use for her. Um, and actually her main use for her is not even on the wiki. And I'll kind of just talk about it real quick. Uh, and she can also decrease spear resistance 25% for all enemies and light and dark resistance for 130%. This skill is going to be the main interesting one. Uh, so really what you're probably going to do 
is depending on everything that she goes, but she can help reduce your team's uh, damage very, very much. So it's 50% uh, damage taken and then another 50% either physical or magical. So that's 75% of all damage that you receive can be mitigated basically by this. Uh, de if Depending on how you use her skills. Uh, but most likely turn one and two you're going to leave her in here. Turn one you're going to probably uh, just do uh, these uh depending on exactly how things are going and once again the turns are dependent on how you go but you're going to be using her mitigate physical and uh overall damage and then uh you know you can do the spear resistance to dark resist and you work your way through um so, you know, she has to jump damage here. She has 100% stop resist, which is nice with wind resistance as well. Um, let's see. She hates humans and beasts, which is actually very useful because a lot of the bosses we fight are those. And she, she will be true double handing everything. She has already 100% modifier cap. So giving her another 100% will give her the maximum. Uh, and, uh, she has the 300% if you give her STMR, which you will be doing. Um, and also she has 75% less, uh, target to begin with as well. And the jump damage, but she's going to be the one unit that you're not really going to be focusing on the jump. So you're going to be looking for a hundred percent, uh, only through double hand and, uh, honestly her, uh, Limit Burst isn't all that useful other than the fact that she could do 120% to all three to all elements for three turns. Uh, it's not much home to write about there either. You're really going to be using her normal form mostly for either AR chaining. Uh, and that's more, you know, that's tough to do uh, without a clicker. Or for the buffs, which have the mitigations as well. Her Bray Shift form is much, much, much more interesting. Uh, she has magic damage, which uses physical killers with AoE. She can do dark evoke magic. Um, and this is what is most exciting for her. Um, she will be using the evocation gauge, which is kind of important because you do need to manage the evocation gauge with her. Uh, with the equipment here that we are getting right now we will be getting a uh there is a piece from the vision world that you can equip on her it is a uh armor piece uh that does not give a lot of uh overall stats the lupine guard it does give 23 attack and 70 magic which is uh important uh because you know you'll you'll be using that uh 70 magic part for her much more often but basically use evoking dark espers she will be able to do a 25 percent dark area effect uh think like uh envy terra with her 25 percent fire etc uh this is going to be very useful the only problem is uh this form is unilite so if you spend and you have some EX coins, this unit's going to be a hell of a lot easier to, to get to EX3. The unit will be uh, and a lot cheaper for anybody involved. So that's going to be kind of your main goal there. Um, we have, so she has the ability to do Dark Evoke, which is basically what you're going to be focusing on. She has Wind Magic uh, damage as well, which, and, the magic all uses physical killers just think Igni and Louise here uh, she could also decrease one of each of the elements and just part of her triple and that gives a uh, five LB gauge to all allies as well so if you're really trying to go full 100% damage she can do your buffs and your decrease in attack and give you 
uh, your area effect as well. The only thing that she really lacks is giving everybody, uh, unfortunately, give every, and in peril as well. Uh, but the one thing that she really does lack is the ability to give everyone dark up damage. Uh, if there are units like Sephiroth that you're bringing up that can bring up their own dark, that that's there. Otherwise, uh, that is the one thing that she does miss. Uh, so basically, turn one most likely, and two, you're going to go there. Turn th uh, on her normal form to buff up everything and to lower spirit. Unless if you bring, or not spirit, to lower the uh, 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 spear, then you'll be bringing in um, her for turn three to decrease attack, defense, magic, spirit to everybody uh, at 87%, which is actually pretty freaking good. Um, then turn four, summon, turn five, nuke. Um, and that's kind of, and once again, it depends on how everything sets up. But she can do everything except for uh, the additional dark damage. Uh, and that's her strength uh, overall. And uh, she has uh, this dark evoke finish. So you're going to, her finish is going to be uh, doing two summon hexes and then a uh, awakened hexes, which does uh, 490% damage at the very end it does require three evoke though and so just remember and the summon hexes requires two so that triple cast is going to be seven evoke overall and you are going to evoke a esper beforehand with that so you need to be able to ensure that somehow you can uh get at least seven most likely the turn after or you know it's three turns so you know you can do a turn say three turn four is to reduce a defense attack and all that then turn five there that gives you a little bit more time but with her you do need to make sure that you have the evocation gauged in for it to be a hundred percent used uh ex3 is 500 magic she has 100 uh, and then 200 Evo Mag, da Evo Mag damage and 100% Evoke magic damage um, as the ability there. So you're going to, her is this a overall Evoke magic hybrid type unit similar to what you're going to, what you usually build Terra for. Um, and she, her normal attack even does evoke damage as well. Uh, her limit burst, which you're really not going to use very much, or it's very hard to get her to use, can reduce dark and wind resistance by 135%. Um, just because there's too much. So, all in all, she's the only real unit to go for to EX3. If you're going to do so, but remember, she is basically going to be mostly used on her brave ship form, and she is a Unilite. Uh, I'm going to see if I could get Rees uh, and use her because I think Una is just going to be way too expensive down the line. Otherwise, I would probably actually uh, say skip the banner. Uh, but with her being able to, as long as you have the Lupine Guard, which you have to have in this, uh, then she becomes incredibly useful, especially with, say, Sephiroth and other units with that Dark Field uh, to deal a lot of Dark Damage. Uh, she has the ability, she has actually too much in her kit to actually be able to use all of it, but it allows you to pick and choose pretty much anything, especially with the dark damage, uh, to help out your team or to debuff the opposite team. So I think she is the unit that you should go for if you're going to go for either of the two units out there. So what do you guys think? Uh, please like and subscribe. I will try and do these videos every week if possible. I might miss a week or two depending on the holidays, but... I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys later. Bye, everyone.